The color light signal displays light of different colors, depending upon the aspect of the signal to be conveyed to the loco pilot. It is a sleek equipment fitted on a signal post. With increase in railway electrification and other modernization works, use of color light signaling is increasing day by day in Indian railways. The light units are specifically designed to avoid phantom effects in sunlight, which otherwise might occur due to internal reflection and tend to give the impression of a cleared signal. Each light unit comprises a low voltage filament lamp at the focal center of a double lens system to provide an efficient optical arrangement without the use of a reflector. Color light signals, as the name implies, gives the different aspects both by day and night by colors corresponding to the night aspects of semaphore signals. The multi-unit type signals are of 2-unit, 3-unit or 4-unit type depending upon the number of aspects to be displayed. They are made of either cast iron, sheet metal or fiber reinforced plastic. The grouping of the light units is usually vertical with the red aspect at the bottom so as to be close to the loco pilot's eye level as possible. In the case of a 3-aspect signal, the green is placed uppermost for the best sighting, whereas with a four aspect signal, the two yellow aspects must be as widely separated as possible to give a clear double yellow indication at a distance. Each aspect lamps are separated by about 300 mm. The same aspect is displayed both by day and night. High intensity beams produced by these signals have great penetrating power with increased range of visibility. This is important when atmospheric conditions are unfavorable. No moving parts are used, hence failures and maintenance are less. As the structure is light and small, mounting is easy. Backgrounds such as trees and buildings, etc which are bad backgrounds for semaphore signals are good backgrounds for color light signals. Aspects can be displayed at driver's eye level. Aspects of signals in advance are pre-warned by rear signal. The operation is very quick. Red aspect. Stop dead. Do not proceed. Communication conveyed by the signal aspect to the train loco pilot. A. Danger ahead. Do not proceed. B. Signal cannot be passed in this position unless authorized under special instructions. Yellow aspect. Caution. Proceed and be prepared to stop at the next stop signal. Communication conveyed by the signal aspect to the train loco pilot. A. The driver has to be prepared to stop at the next stop signal displaying red. B. If the signal in rear was displaying green aspect, the full braking distance is available between this signal and the signal in advance displaying red. C. Caution. Aspect demands braking or reduction in speed. Retardation. Double yellow aspect. Attention. Proceed and be prepared to pass next signal at caution. Communication conveyed by the signal aspect to the train loco pilot. A. The signal in advance is in off position. It is not displaying 
red aspect. B. The signal in advance has to be approached at a restricted speed. Driver will have to reduce his speed because braking distance may not be available between the next yellow signal and the next to next signal displaying red. C. Aspect Attention Demands braking or reduction in speed. Retardation. Green Aspect Proceed Proceed at maximum permissible speed. Communication conveyed by the signal aspect to the train loco pilot. A. The signal in advance is in off position. It may be displaying green, double yellow or yellow aspect. B. Driver can proceed at the maximum permissible speed up to the next signal and then be guided by the aspect displayed by that signal. In multi-unit type, a separate light unit is provided for each aspect to be displayed. Multiple unit color light signal units are separated from each other and fitted on one cast aluminium sheet metal fiber reinforced plastic. The light units are generally arranged vertically about 300 millimeters apart, green on top, yellow in the middle and red at the bottom for three aspect signal. Yellow, green, yellow, red for four aspect signal. In a four aspect signal, the two yellow aspects separated to give a clear double yellow indication at a distance. The outer lens is a clear lens. The diameter of outer lens is 213 millimeters. The outer surface of lens is plain and inner surface is stepped. The stepped lens enables better use to be made of the light emitted and increases its transmittance value. Stepping also reduces the weight of the lens. It is a plain convex lens. Polycarbonate lenses are used as outer lens to increase signal visibility and these are unbreakable lenses. Inner lens is colored lens that is green, yellow or red. The diameter of inner lens is 140 millimeters. Inner lenses are stepped outside and plain inside. Doublet lens, outer and inner lens, is used on the unit because more beam candle power is obtained by this arrangement than with a single optical lens. The lens combination collects light from the lamp through a solid angle of 155 degrees and refracts this into almost parallel beam of light. The amount of useful luminous flux cannot be increased by using reflectors due to the possibility of phantom indications from the reflected headlight of trains approaching or due to sun rays. Frame It is provided for each aspect signal. The lenses are properly secured with joining compounds and gland packing asbestos on the frame. Background collar to increase the visibility, steel backgrounds are provided around the color light signal unit. Lamp holder is made of PBT. It is provided for fixing the lamp. It has three grooves to accommodate three lamp pins. At the bottom, it has two phosphor bronze contact springs which firmly make the connection with lamp pole. The lamp feed wires are terminated on two bolts. L bracket is provided for each aspect in signal unit. Lamp holder is mounted on it. It has two vertical and two horizontal oblong holes. At the time of focusing the lamp, the lamp holder can be moved horizontally for horizontal adjustment as well as vertically for vertical adjustment. A signal lamp consists of a helix of tungsten wire mounted within a sealed glass envelope. Generally, three types of lamps are used in color light signals. Double pole single filament, SL18. Double pole double filament, SL21. Triple pole double filament, SL35A. Each aspect is normally provided with a hood to shield the lens unit from external light. Hood is provided to prevent entry of external light on signal lens to prevent phantom effects. It also increases contrast and visibility of the signal. 
cover is provided with a gasket to prevent entry of water and dust inside the compartment. It is locked with universal lock to prevent outside interference. Outside of cover is painted black with diagonal cross of aluminium white. Breathing holes are provided on the cover, one for each compartment to ensure ventilation. Ventilation is provided to prevent the overheating of transformer and lamp. The complete color light signal unit is fixed over a turntable. It is useful to turn the unit both horizontally and vertically for correct adjustment of the beam light. The mount socket turntable is fixed on the post with three bolts and by proper adjustment of these bolts the entire unit can be tilted either vertically or horizontally for correct alignment of the beam of light. To adjust the position of the signal unit as per the geographical conditions, up or down gradient, curvature etc. for correct alignment of signal. For the purpose of focusing, all signal units are fitted with two lug drilled with small apertures provided on the right side of the signal unit on terminal box externally at the bottom of the unit to form an aperture sighting arrangement. For sighting a signal from a particular spot on the track, these two holes are to be aligned in the direction of the approaching train. Tail cable from location box to signal is terminated in it. Wiring is done for individual aspect from cable termination box. A padlock is provided in terminal box to prevent outside interference. Application Route Indicator and Direction Type Indicator Diameter 92 mm Color Lunar White Type Outside Step Nominal Focal Length 16 mm Application Route indicator and direction type indicator. Diameter 125 mm. Color clear. Type inside step with molded prisms for close up indication. Nominal focal length 70 mm. Application calling on signal. Diameter 136 mm. Color yellow. Type inside step. Nominal focal length. 89 millimeters. Application Position light shunt signal. Diameter 101 millimeters. Color Luna white. Type Inside step. Nominal focal length 89 millimeters. In diverging junctions, each route is provided with a signal in case of semaphore signaling. To avoid number of signals with color light signaling, an arrangement is adapted in which only one signal is provided with an indicating apparatus known as route indicator to work in conjunction with the signal. This route indicator indicates the line on which the train is signaled by displaying a row of white lights or by displaying illuminated letters or numbers. This indicator consists of a short metal case and divided into as many number of compartments as there are routes. Each compartment is provided with a stencil with letter or figure as required fixed behind a round glass. Two lamps are provided in the compartment connected in parallel for illuminating the stencils so that fusing of one lamp may not cause a failure of route indicator. The visibility of this indicator is very poor as such they are used on signals where the trains stop and start, generally starters. The maximum number of routes which can be indicated by using stencil type route indicator is four. If more than four routes are provided, it creates confusion or hardship to driver. All lines ahead are indicated individually, including main line, either by an alphabet, M for main line, B for branch line, O for goods, or S for Secunderabad, D for Delhi, or by the number. Multi-lamp route indicator consists of number of lamps in a case arranged in different rows and columns. These lamps are illuminated in such a manner that they form a numeric or an alphabet. There are two types of multi-lamp route indicators. One is consisting of 35 lamps and the other with 49 lamps. In the first type, each row is provided with five lamps and there are seven rows. 
the indicator can exhibit any letters and numerals up to 9. In second type, 49 lamps. Each row is provided with 7 lamps and there are 7 rows. This indicator can exhibit any letters and numerals up to 19. When still more number of routes are to be exhibited, two indicators of 35 lamps type can be kept side by side numerals up to 99 can be displayed. This route indicator can be used to display any number of routes. The visibility of this indicator is better than the stencil type indicator. This is normally used on home signals where more number of routes, more than three routes on either side of main line are to be displayed. The lamps in the route indicators may be connected in parallel or series as required. These are also known as position light type route indicators or direction type route indicator. When a route is set, it is indicated by a row of five white lights pointing towards left or right of the signal. This indicator can exhibit a maximum of three routes on either side of the main line and no route indication is displayed for the main line. Fusing of one or two lamps may not give wrong indication since it has better visibility. It is used in high speed junctions and at wayside stations. Signal tubular post. A signal post consists of a tube of section 140 millimeters outer diameter having each a thickness of 4 millimeters. It is very easy to assemble the tubular post fittings on the pole and the fittings can be easily turned through any required angle. The maximum height is about 10.5 meters. The post being light in construction, transport and handling is very easy. The signal post is mounted on a signal base. Signal base the signal post is mounted on a signal base. The base itself is bolted to a cement concrete foundation. It is a cast iron base having a round section in the bottom. There are four oblong holes on the base rim through which 25 millimeters dia foundation anchor bolts may pass. The height of the base is 550 millimeters. The gap left over between each of the oblong holes at the base rim and its holding down anchor bolts. This space is also filled up by pitch or bitumen to prevent the four anchor bolts from rust and corrosion. Foundation for signal post should be of cement concrete in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 6 using stone ballast of 25 into 25 millimeter size and to be cast at location shown or marked by section engineer in charge. The foundation are to be plastered on all sides. The anchor bolts of size 25 millimeters by 900 millimeters minimum to be used for color light signal posts. While casting foundation, PVC pipe or GI pipe of 50 millimeters diameter to be used to create gap for cable path through foundation and the pipe to be removed later. The path so formed in the foundation shall be used for routing the cable later. Signal pole shall be securely fixed to the surface base and erected on signal foundation and plumbed. The gap between the signal pole and surface base shall be fiddled up with lead wool or any other approved substance to avoid tilting. Earthwork shall be made around the foundation and consolidated. In case of embankments, stone pitching is to be done. If soil erosion is likely, the signal base is mounting on this signal foundation. In color light signal territory, all the stop and the subsidiary signals are to be in numbered for identification as in signal interlocking plan. The permissible signal that is the distance signal is to be fixed with P marker on the post itself without any number. Signal numbering plate will be white in color with number in black color. Signal ladders are provided for all signal posts. Usually, the top of the ladder is fitted with a mild steel clamp to the signal post just below the color light signal unit. The ladder is chosen according to the length of the post. To enable a person to balance properly while he is working on the signal post, a guard rail arrangement or stage is provided on the ladder near the color light signal unit. If any part of signal fitting, example, ladder erected at distance of less than 2360 millimeters from center of adjacent track, 
it should be blanketed off to a height of 300 millimeters between 2060 millimeters and 2360 millimeters above rail level. To ensure good visibility, it is essential that the light unit is focused to align the beam of light towards the driver. As the red aspect is more important, it is kept at driver's eye level, 3.65 meters approximately above rail level. Focusing is to be done under bright day. Light conditions at 90% of rated voltage. For the purpose of sighting, all signals are provided with two lugs drilled with small apertures at the bottom of the unit. These two holes are aligned in the direction from which signals are to be sighted. See that the signal post is in proper plumb and that all the fixing bolts of foundation base and unit base are tight. See if the unit is properly aligned with aspects turned towards the track at the furthest. Fix a sighting object with a point of maximum required visibility on track or place a man there with a walkie-talkie. The complete color light signal unit is fixed over the turntable. The mounting socket is fixed on a post with three bolts. The entire unit can be tilted either vertically or horizontally for correct alignment of the beam of light as necessary for fixing it. Point where the signal should be sighted first. Perch yourself on the ladder behind the viewing through the lug apertures on the right hand bottom of the unit. Turn the unit as required. If the unit seems to be away from or closer to the track, loosen nuts on the turntable bolts and adjust its position. The curve or gradient within the signaling distance shall be taken into account while doing it. Tighten the nuts of turntable bolts. For focusing of individual aspect, ensure that the inner and outer lenses are parallel and fixed properly in their position. Keep the main filament of bulb at the center of inner and outer lens by proper adjustment of the lamp holder. Now, for focusing of the lamp, loosen the fixing studs of lamp bracket. Moving it gradually up and down, arrive at a position so that a complete round bright spot is formed at the middle of outer lens. Fix the bracket in that position by tightening its screw studs. Loosen the nuts on holder bolts below bracket. Moving holder to and fro, bring it to a position at which the aspect is able to be sighted at its brightest form from the maximum required visibility distance. Tighten the nuts. To improve the visibility at close range or on curve, use spread light lens. The lens shall be so fitted that the subsidiary beam through the close-in view prism on the lens reaches driver depending on position of signal that is left or right with respect to the track when the driver stops very close to the signal. Finally, moving along the entire sighting distance, make sure that the signal can be sighted well and continuously for 200 meters towards the signal from the farthest point of visibility. Color light signal unit 2, 3, 4 aspect shall be properly mounted on signal post. The mounting shall be done using rope and pulley and taking adequate precaution against movements on adjacent lines, if any.
The color light signal unit is painted in black color. The post is painted with aluminum white color enamel except for second distance signal where post is painted with black and yellow stripes alternatively at the interval of 300 millimeters. Wherever root indicator junction type or stencil type is to be erected on a signal post, color light signal shall be mounted on top of the signal pole on an offset bracket fixed with U-bolts of 20 millimeters dia. Two numbers on the signal pole. A through hole of 21.5 millimeters diameter to be drilled on the pole just below offset bracket and through bolt with check nut provided to prevent the offset bracket from sliding down. Color light signals may be mounted on a rigid ground post or a signal gantry clear of standard dimensions. Each signal unit shall be rigidly fixed in position. Signal poles shall be securely fixed to surface base and erected on signal foundation and plumbed. The gap between the signal pole and surface base shall be filled up with lead wool or any other approved substance to avoid tilting. The cable entry at the signal unit shall be provided with wooden plug along the cable to close excess gap to prevent rodent entry. The tail cable shall first be terminated on the root indicator and separate wiring. PVC3 by 0.75 mm copper wire shall be run to color light signal unit from root indicator. Tail cable is to be terminated on 6-way block in the terminal unit and 3 by 20 wire to be run from there to the aspects. Signal unit doors shall be locked using universal locks. Earthing of signal posts to be done using 7 SWG GI wire run from unit to foundation bolt and then to earth electrode in earth pit. The signal post shall be properly plumbed and fitted with ladder having platform and guarding on top and adequate supports for ladder. All signal posts including ladder shall be clear of infringement that is 2.36 meters from center line of the nearest track. Markers and number plates shall be fixed wherever necessary as per signaling plan using suitable clamps. Signal number has to be painted on the number plate. All fittings are to be tightened properly. Signal unit shall be locked properly. The clearance is from center lines of immediate adjacent tracks to be painted with arrow mark on the pole foundation. Hoods for signal aspect are to be provided. Wire mesh to be provided for signal aspects. Also, protective mesh shall be provided in case of nearby RE live conductors. The protective wire mesh shall be earthed. Earthwork shall be made around foundation and consolidated. In case of embankments, stone pitching is to be done if soil erosion is likely. Signals shall be located as per approved signaling plan. While giving marking for signal foundations, the following points to be kept in mind. Signals shall normally be located on left side of the track for which they are intended. Distance between adjacent track centers in straight portion shall be minimum 5.3 meters for new lines. For existing yards, less clearance may be available. To install a signal post between tracks in non-platform area, clearance of 2.36 plus 2.36 plus 0 0.6 meter of ladder width is to be available. As per clearance available between lines, the location of signal ensuring minimum clearance of 2.36 meters from immediate adjacent track center to be ensured. If left side location is not feasible, right side location to be considered. However, the same has to be incorporated in approved signaling plan with approval of competent authority. In case the clearance of 2.36 meters is not possible, even with right side location of signal, provision of gantry signal to be done or sanctioned from railway board to be obtained for clearance less than 2.36 meters. On platforms, signal post clearance to be 4.72 meters from center of adjacent track. Main line and loop line starter signals to be located in same alignment wherever feasible. If same alignment is not feasible, 
the main line starter shall be located protecting loop line point also. The starter signal shall be located with minimum clearance of 11 meter in rear of block joint of control track circuit to avoid premature flyback of signal in case of long hood diesel engine. From the point of view of visibility, it is preferable to have the signals erected on the side opposite to that of the OHE masts. This may not be practicable in the case of signals on double line sections as well as signals in station yards, for example, starters. For good visibility of signals on tangent tracks, it is desirable that the signal shall be located within the OHE structure. That is, the distance of the signal from the track center shall be less than the distance of the OHE mast from the track center. To achieve this, Wherever possible, the first five of the OHE structures in front of the signal shall be located as per drawing 22.8 of SEM Part 2. In case of curved tracks, it may be desirable to place the signal outside the OHE mast for good visibility. The location and height of the signal in each case shall be decided by a sighting committee. Where necessary, a signal is distinguished by prescribed markers. Such markers fixed on the signal post and below the signals is as below. Permissive signal, letter P in black on white circular disc. Automatic stop signal, letter A is black on white circular disc. Semi-automatic stop signal, white illuminated letter A against black background when working as an automatic stop signal and letter A extinguished when working as a manual stop signal. Color light distant or Warner signal on a post by itself. Letter P in black on white circular disc. Intermediate block stop signal. Letter IB black on white circular disc. Calling on signal. Letter C black on white circular disc. Gate stop signal. Letter G, black on yellow circular disc. Gate stop signal automatic block territory. Letter G, black on yellow circular disc and white illuminated letter A against black background. Note. Letter A shall be lit only when the gates are closed and locked against road traffic. Where necessary, signal arms shall be extinguished by prescribed signs. The diameter of markers is 236 millimeters. 20 millimeter spacing is to be maintained around the border of the circumference of the marker board. The lettering should be at the middle of the marker. Color light signal should be visible as stipulated in para 7.7.6 .7 and 7.7.7 .7 of SEM part 1 are to be ensured. These are Distance signal 400 meters. Inner distance signal 200 meters where this signal is provided. All stop signal 200 meters. If it is not possible to ensure 200 meters continuous visibility of any stop signal while approaching it, a suitable speed restriction shall be imposed. The visibility test object would be used to determine the onset of fog. All station working rules define the visibility test object. The visibility test object as per GR 3.612B may be an arm by day and the light or backlight by night of a fixed semaphore signal or a fixed color light signal specified by special instructions. The station masters should not exercise their discretion as per provision of GR 3.611 during foggy weather on the placement of detonators at station on the section where this first signal to be encountered by the local pilot is a stop signal. The discretion of the station master as provided in GR 3.612A may be used in sections having stations with permissive signal or signals that is distant or independent warner.
Such stations shall have a prescribed visibility test object as distinct from the visibility test object as mentioned in para above. The prescribed visibility test object may be located at a distance of 180 meters from a nominated location where the station master shall stand. The prescribed visibility test object may be defined in the station working rules. When a prescribed visibility test object is not visible from 180 meters or less during dense fog, the station master shall not use his discretion but will place the detonators to warn the local pilot. GR 3.611 In thick fog, foggy or tempestuous weather impairing visibility, whether it is necessary to indicate to the local pilot of an approaching train, the location of a signal Two detonators shall be placed on the line by a railway servant appointed by the station master in his behalf about 10 meters apart and at least 270 meters outside the signal or signals concerned. GR 3.612A The station master may comply with the provisions of sub rule 1 at his discretion but shall always do so when visibility conditions from any cause prevent him from seeing a prescribed visibility test object from a distance of not less than 180 meters or a lesser distance if expressly sanctioned by the railway board. GR 3.612B The visibility test object may be a post erected for the purpose and lighted at night or the arm by day and the light or the back light by night of a fixed semaphore signal specified by special instructions or the light of a fixed color light signal both by day and night specified by special instructions. For example, up main line starter. In AC electrified area, distance of OHE mast in front of the signal should not be less than 30 meters. Distance of OHE mast behind the signal should not be less than 10 meters. This may be reduced to 3 meters provided that the mast is not anchored and the contact wire is staggered away from the signal. Height of the center line of the red aspect is 3.65 meter from rail level. Signal without root indicator shall not be higher than 5.2 meters from rail level. Minimum distance of the signal from the center of adjacent track is 2.36 meters. If any part of signal fittings, example ladder erected at a distance of less than 2360 millimeters from center of adjacent track, it should be blanked off to a height of 300 millimeters between 2060 millimeters and 2360 millimeters above rail level. If the signal or its fittings fall within 2 meters from the live OHE conductor, the iron screen of wire mesh should be provided between the signal post and the OHE and properly earthed to protect the staff screen shall be connected to an earth not exceeding 10 ohm in resistance. Provision of such screen is mandatory in all cases where the distance from OHE wire is less than 2 meters. Signal unit and screen should be connected to earth. Do's Replace the lamp during morning period. Check for any blackish, whitish spot on lamp and replace it immediately if found. Signal transformer should be checked for its firm connection and its heating. For stop signals, provide outer lens with molded deflecting prism for close-up view. Clean the lens and bulbs regularly. Check the gasket especially before monsoon and replace if found defective. Don'ts Do not forget to provide M seal before monsoon to avoid the possibility of leakage. No load current should not be more than 15 mA for the cascading to be effective. Do not forget to close and lock the color light signal unit cover after completion of work. Don't do focusing work or bulb replacement when the train is approaching. A signal lamp consists of a helix of tungsten wire known as filament mounted within a sealed glass envelope. 
the cap and holder of lamp are so designed that filament is always at the focal point of the lens system of the signal. For color light signals, a low voltage lamp of 12 volt is preferred. The filament is sufficiently thick, short and mechanically strong. Especially for the signals, kept closer to the track and subjected to vibrations. The main horizontal filament or filament is placed at the focal point of the lens combination. In order to ensure that the filament is at the correct focal point, three pin caps are used. As shown in figure, the three pins are not at 120 degrees apart and hence insertion of the lamp is only possible in desired focal point position. The lamp has two bases. The inner one is for sealing the envelope and the top one with the pins is used for rebasing to get the filaments in the correct position. To ensure the uniformity and to cater for new developments in the signal lamp, the following types of double pole signal lamps shall be used in color light signal areas. For main reception and departure signals in non-automatic signaling gears, SL21 12 volt 33 watt double filament lamps are used. For junction type root indicators, SL33 110 volt 25 watt single filament lamp are used. For position light shunt, SL33 110 volt 25 watt single filament lamps are used. For calling on signals, SL33 110 volt 25 watt single filament lamps are used. For yellow and green aspect on signal in automatic signaling areas, SL18 12 volt 24 watt signal filament with cascading aspect lamps are used. For red aspect on signals in automatic signaling areas, SL21 12 volt 33 watt double parallel filament lamps are used. Signal lamps must be tested for 45 hours before they are provided on signal. A record of testing of lamps should be maintained as per table given below. Serial number, type of lamp, firm's name, lot number, manufacturing date, date of testing, start, Finish. Total number of bulbs for testing. Bulbs fused during testing. Pre-stressing of triple lamp should be done at 10.5 volts for 3 hours for each filament. The following points shall be followed during testing. Lamp shall be operated in the vertical position, cap up. Testing shall be under on-off condition for 1 minute each continuously. Testing voltage should be 10.5 volts on lamp terminal. Separate signal transformer should be used for each lamp. Single filament and double filament lamp shall be tested separately. Replacement schedule. Single filament lamp, 80 days or as per instruction given by CSTE of railway. Double filament lamp, 30 days or as per instruction given by CSTE of railway. Do's. Lamp must be replaced with similar lamps. Lamps shall be replaced immediately after main filament of signal lamp becomes defective. A record shall be maintained for replacement of signal lamps. Voltage must be checked on every visit on signal transformer, input and output voltage and on the signal lamp holder terminal. Nut of lamp holder must be properly tightened and chuck nut and washer are provided. In case of SL35A and SL35B signal lamp, second filament shall be checked by opening the supply of first filament and indication at cabin or station where provided shall be verified. Nut and bolt of MECR unit, H-type transformer and common pole plate shall be checked by may be loose by the vibration and see the MECR delay is working properly. Replacing of SL35 A and B signal lamp. Common pole plate shall be pressed by hand, then bulb should be removed from signal lamp holder. It may be possible that the bulb may be free from its cap. Nut and bolt of bracket fixed with signal unit also of the signal lamp holder fixed on bracket are not loose. See contact spring of lamp holder is proper intention and contact is making properly and not are rusty. Don'ts. Do not remove the lamp for cleaning of signal lenses. Do not apply voltage more than 90% of the rated voltage of signal lamp. 
and shall not be more than 10.8 volts. Do not use any lamp without being tested. Do not store lamps in signal unit or cable termination box. Do not carry lamps in the toolbox. Do not use discolored, unshaped filament and loose cap lamps. Do not use any screwdriver or pliers for making tension of bulb holder spring while lamp lit. It may be a cause of short circuit of supply. The main power supply 230 volt AC drawn from station feeder or AT through the adequate size power cable 230 volt AC supply is extended up to power panel or IPS. 230 volt by 110 volt AC 1 kilovolt ampere 2 transformers one each for either end of the yard shall be provided for signal lighting. 110 volt AC output of the transformer shall be provided as omnibus circuit for connecting feed to various signal aspects. In IPS signal step down transformer 230 by 110 volt AC for upside and downside signal separately provided. The rated voltage of color light signal of multi-unit type is 110 volt, 50 cycles per second is AC. A transformer 110 by 12 volt, 40 volt ampere, 50 cycles per second is provided for each aspect in the respective unit. Without a signal transformer, if the lamp is directly connected to the cabin as the lamp current is about 3 ampere for SL21 12 volt 3 watt, the voltages drop in cable will be very high. Use of a transformer at the signal reduces the current in the cable to about 33 watt, 110 volt which equals to 0.3 ampere and drop in voltage will be only 0.3 ampere into 10 ohms cable resistance about 3 volt out of 110 volt supply. In color light Hence signal, the voltage drop a signal is negligible control relay and the same always control the volt signal supply can be used Without for a control all signals relay, located at signal may places. have no aspect. Tappings are provided either on primary side or on secondary side of the transformer to get the specified voltage across the lamp. Aspect signal, irrespective of one line control drop. relay is required. Transformer rating Similarly, is 110 three volt, aspect 12 signal, volt AC, two control 40 relays, volt ampere, and for four aspect hertz, signal, minimum capacity of the transformer is 40 volt ampere continuous. No Two load aspect, current color light when the lamp is not burning for a shall start be not signal. more than 15 milliampere. The relay HR note is controlled as through the section circuit letter proving all number conditions 96, including signal SIG lever button M4, operated contacts. Dated 01, the energization of this relay connects. A 110 aspect volt AC yellow. feed system should be provided any on one all color more light signal signal required installations. to take off the signal is not fulfilled. HR is de-energized and the signal is maintained at on aspect. Two aspect color light signal control circuit for an advanced starter signal. The relay DR is controlled through the selection circuit proving all the conditions including signal, lever, button operated contacts and block instrument contact. The energization of this relay connects off aspect green. If any one or more conditions required to take off the signal is not fulfilled, DR is de-energized and the signal is maintained at on aspect. Three aspect color light signal control circuit for a stop signal. In this circuit, HR, DR control relays are used. Where HR is yellow, off aspect control relay. DR is green aspect control relay. HR relay is energized proving the conditions required up to next signal and overlap in advance of it. DR relay is controlled by the off aspect yellow or green of the three aspect signal in advance. When HR itself is not energized the signal is maintained at red aspect irrespective of the signal aspect ahead. When HR is energized yellow or green aspect is selected through DR relay contacts. A front contact of DR relay is used for green aspect circuit lamp. A back contact of DR relay in yellow lamp circuit is used to prevent both yellow and green lamps lighting up when DR picks up. In this case, 
the green aspect controlling relay of the distant 1D DR is controlled through 5NWKR and any of the two off aspect proving relays of the home signal. The attention aspect controlling relay 1DHHR is energized whenever the home signal is off irrespective of whether the route is set for the straight or turnout. Normally, the distance signal displays yellow through HHR back contact. When 1D HHR energizes, the signal displays double yellow. The bottom yellow lamp is now lit through HHR front, DR back and top yellow with another front contact of HHR and DR back. Another front contact of HHR is used to prevent the top yellow burning in parallel with bottom yellow when HHR is de-energized. The green aspect is displayed through HHR and DR front contacts. First method. When HR is de-energized, the signal shows red aspect. When HR alone is energized and the next signal is at on, the signal displays yellow aspect through DR back contact. When HHR is energized in addition to HR and the next signal is showing yellow, the signal displays attention, double yellow aspect. When DR is energized in addition to HR and HHR and the next signal is showing attention, double yellow or proceed green. This method is used for controlling automatic block signals where HHR up has only one meaning that is a head signal is yellow. Second method. In this case both HHR and DR are not allowed to energize at a time. HHR picks up only when the signal in advance displays yellow aspect. DR picks up only when the signal in advance displays double yellow or green aspect. When HR is up, the bottom yellow is brought in circuit, which is maintained to give double yellow aspect when HHR picks up. When DR is up, this yellow lamp is disconnected and green lamp is connected through HR front and DR front contacts. This method is used for controlling absolute block signals. Where HHR up has two meanings, that is, a head signal is yellow or yellow with root indicator. In color light signal units, no backlight is provided for the signal operating person to see whether the signal is on or off during operation. Generally, all the aspects are repeated individually to the place of operation. It is often sufficient to give one indication for on position and another common indication for all off aspects. The methods adopted for repeating signal aspects are using potential drop method obsolete, using current transformer method, using proving relays method. In this, a current transformer is used in series with primary circuit. The primary of this transformer is connected in series with the supply and the secondary to an indication lamp. When signal lamp is burning, the arrangement gives nearly 10 volt of the indication lamp. When the signal lamp is fused, primary current is reduced and thus secondary EMF reduces, causing the indication lamp to become dim. This current transformer having the indication lamp 12 volts, 4 watt, directly connected is known as I-type transformer. The primary current is about 0.3 ampere. The voltage ratio primary to secondary is 10 to 7 volts plus or minus 5 percent. The secondary load is 2.5 volt ampere at 7 volt. This type of current transformer is provided where only signal aspect indication is to be given. For providing cascading arrangement, Lamp check relay ECR methods are used. In this, a small amount of voltage is dropped across a transformer connected in series with supply. 
This AC voltage drop is rectified by a bridge rectifier and the output DC voltage is made to operator relay. When the signal lamp fails, the current through the circuit decreases and therefore the voltage across the relay drops below the drop away value. The dropping of the ECR disconnects the indication lamps. There are two types of current transformers used for energizing lamp checking relays, H-type and L-type. Purpose of ECR method To provide cascading arrangement To provide red lamp protection arrangement Controlling the signal in rear in accordance with the aspect displayed on the signal in advance To provide a signal aspect indication at the operating place Advantages of ECR method Less line voltage drop Failure of indication lamp does not affect signal lamp voltage ECR contacts can be used for the circuit requiring for proving. When the signal lamp fails, the supply for the indication lamp is completely cut off, thus avoiding the dim glow. The drawback is that it is costly requiring the lamp proving unit. This method is suitable where the signal lamps are directly fed from the cabin in both non-RE and RE signaling areas. L-type transformer is suitable for low current, about 300 milliampere on primary, secondary develops 9 volt. This method is normally used in ACRE areas where direct feeding of the signals are not possible for long range of signal operation. In this, H-type current transformer is connected in series with the secondary side of the signal lamp transformer. In H-type transmitter, current of 2.5 ampere on primary develops 9 volt secondary. The capacity of the H-type transformer is 0.09 volt ampere. The voltage ratio is 0.3 volt by 9 volt plus or minus 5%. When ECR picks up, its repeater relay picks up in the cabin. When signal lamp is fused or not lit, ECR drops. Then its repeater relay also drops at the cabin or relay room. Signal lamp indications in the cabin are given through ECPR relay contacts. Earlier days, current transformers of L-type or H-type and a selenium bridge rectifier are used to enable a 1000 ohms line relay to be used as ECR. But now the lamp proving units consist of current transformers, bridge rectifier along with a relay is used directly and these are also known as lamp proving relays or lamp checking relays. Cascading arrangement When a color light signal is showing a particular aspect and the lamp of that aspect fuses, then signal becomes blank. To avoid this condition, cascading or cutting in arrangement in the lamp controlling circuit is provided in such a way that if a lamp fuses the signal can be restored to next restrictive aspect. Example, if green lamp fuses when signal is displaying clear aspect, then the more restrictive yellow aspect can be lit or if yellow lamp fuses, when signal is displaying caution aspect, then red aspect can be lit. Red lamp protection. It is provided to avoid the passing of train in no light condition of a signal. In this case, the rear signal is made to show on aspect when signal in advance is showing no light. Fifteen to twenty percent of the signaling failures are due to lamp fusing for any reason which hampers the punctuality of the train running. With cascading arrangement off aspect lamp fusing is taken care of. Even then, signal goes blank if on aspect lamp fuses. To arrest these type of failures, the signal lamps are periodically replaced without waiting for fusing. Schedule of replacement of signal lamp is fixed 45 days or 1000 hours for on aspect and 180 days for off aspects. Problems with double pole double filament lamps. 
Both the filaments are lit at the same time and on fusing of main filament, ECR drops even when the signal is lit with auxiliary filament at the site. Periodical replacement of lamps involves upkeeping of records and requires large number of signal lamps. To have better reliability, these lamps are required to be pre-stressed for a given period before using them at site. This also bears additional burden over the signal staff. To remove these anomalies and more reliable signal lighting arrangement gave the concept of triple pole lamp. Two filaments of equal wattage and lumen output are used in these lamps. Normally, main filament is lit. Auxiliary filament serves as a standby and switches on when main filament fuses. Visibility of color light signal is not affected when the main filament is fused and the auxiliary filament is switched on. The lamps are designed with both filaments in parallel configuration to avoid possibilities of hotspot formation. MECR unit monitors the condition of main filament of the triple pole lamp. It basically consists of one H-type current transformer connected in series with the lamp in secondary side of the lamp circuit and the transformer's secondary output voltage is rectified and is connected to one miniature relay MECR. MECR relay picks up when the main filament is burning, drops when main filament fuses. Through the back contact of this relay, auxiliary filament is made to lit. MECR unit shall be fixed inside the signal unit or in the signal location box. In the auxiliary filament circuit path, 1 ohm 15 watt resistance is provided in series with the MECR back contact to bring the main filament first in the circuit when the aspect is switched on. S1 MECR is normally up and made slow to release to avoid wrong indication at the time of aspect changing. S1 MECR down indicates that main filament is fused for its aspect burning at that time. SL35A rating 12 volt 24 watt with 1000 hours life anomaly used for off aspect and color light signal with or without cascading arrangement. SL35AL longer life rating 12 volt 24 watt with 5000 hours life anomaly used for off aspect and color light signal with or without cascading arrangement. SL35B rating 12 volt 33 watt with 1000 hours life anomaly used for on aspect. SL35BL longer life rating 12 volt 33 watt with 5000 hours life anomaly used for on aspect. Materials Triple pole double filament lamps Triple pole lamp holder with base Switching unit MECR Push button switch Buzzer indication lamps PVC wire ARA terminals and other accessories Additional requirements Two spare core from signal location to relay room for MECR is required One extra core for each aspect in tail cable form location to signal post if there is no space in the location for providing RMECR, HMECR, DMECR relay and indication transformers, extra location also required. Reduction in number of signal failures due to lamp fusing. No detention of trains even when the main filament is fused. Reduction in maintenance. Reduction in the duration of failures as indication of main filament fusing appears in the cabin immediately. Periodic replacement of lamp avoided, thereby affecting saving. Economy of lamp. No pre-testing of lamp is required. Main filament proving relay MFPR is normally up. 
If main filament fused, then concerned aspect signal, signal group MECR drops. MECR is made slow to drop to prevent the actuation of buzzer during aspect changing. Individual indication and alarm or a common indication to the maintenance staff by suitable grouping of signals can also be done. If for any reason main filament failed, lamp is not replaced and at such incidents if auxiliary filament also fails concerned signal all ECRs will be dropped and makes normally pick up relay AFPR to drop. Dropping of AFPR relay again connects the buzzer. Buzzer stops when acknowledged again indication continues till the fused lamp is replaced. During the main filament failure or both main and auxiliary filament failure when acknowledged button is pressed MFMR relay picks up. Picking up of MFMR relay disconnects the supply to the buzzer but indication continues. When the lamp is replaced, picking up of MFPR and AFPR relay disconnects the supply to the lamp failure indication. Shunt signals are subsidiary signals to facilitate shunting movement in the yard provided either on a separate post or below a stop signal except on first stop signal of the station. A position light shunt signal provided generally in the color light signaling territory consists of a row of two white lights, one for the on aspect and one for the off aspect. Since this is also a color light signal, the day and night aspect is the same. The two lights of the position light shunt signals will be white by day and by night. The lights of the position light shunt signal will be horizontal in on position and 45 degree above horizontal in the off position. Erection of position light shunt signal ground type. Foundation for signal post. Location box or any masonry foundation are to be done in such a manner that they form. 1. A rigid mass and do not give way. 2. They do not shake due to vibration of train passing. 3. They are not affected due to outside interference. Pit to be excavated and casting of foundation to be done as per standard drawing of the zonal railway. Anchor bolts of size 20 cross 450 millimeters to be used to fix the post. Foundation to be cast at the locations marked by section engineer in charge. Foundation for shunt signal should be of cement concrete type with 1 is to 3 is to 6 ratios. Stone ballast of 20 by 25 millimeter size to be used in casting the foundation. Entire casting shall be done in one go along with foundation bolts. Bolts are to be embedded in concrete with the help of a template after aligning the four holes and leveling the base. The four bolts are to remain on a circle for signal location on foundation. Foundation shall be cast after wooden or sheet steel make former is put inside the pit, aligned and the top of all four walls are held with holding on bolts. Care should be taken during construction that the edges are not damaged. In inclement weather, newly built work shall be covered with gunny bags or tarpaulins so as to prevent the motor from being washed away. Curing. The work is done to be kept well watered in faces and tops. Watering of new work is to be done from a rose nozzle of a watering can. The concrete work is to be kept wetted for about a fortnight. The base for position light shunt signal is about 250 millimeters in height with inner diameter of 100 millimeters. The post used for fixing the shunt signal is about 90 millimeters outer diameter GI pipe of required length. Has to be packed with lead wool. The position light shunt signal shall be properly mounted on post and plumbed. Earthwork to be done around the foundation. Focusing to be done in bright daylight at rated voltage. 
cables to be taken inside through the post to the unit. Terminations can be done direct or interposing terminal block. Fixing of post type shunt signal. An offset bracket to be fixed with U-bolts of 20 mm dia two numbers on the signal post. A through hole of 21.5 mm diameter to be drilled on the pole just below offset bracket and through bolt with check nut provided to prevent the offset bracket from sliding down. To take wires to the signal unit, a vertical slot of not less than 25 mm into 50 mm to be made on signal post. Suitable protection to be provided on slotted post before cable is taken through it. Signal unit doors shall be locked using universal locks. In case LED lit units are not used, the rating of the bulb for shunt signal 110 volt, 25 watt, 2 pin. A calling on signal is a subsidiary signal and has no independent existence. It is provided below a stop signal governing the approach of a train. A calling on signal may be provided below any other stop signal except the last stop signal. An offset bracket to be fixed with U-bolts of 20 mm dia two numbers on the signal post. A through hole of 21.5 mm diameter to be drilled on pole just below offset bracket and through bolt with check nut provided to prevent the offset bracket from sliding down. To take wires to the signal unit, a vertical slot of not less than 25 by 50 mm to be made on signal post. Suitable protection to be provided on slotted post before cable is taken through it. Signal unit doors shall be locked using universal locks. In case LED lit units are not used, the rating of the bulb for calling on signal is 110 volts, 25 watt, 3 pin. In case a calling on signal and a shunt signal are to be placed below the same running signal, calling on signal will be placed below the main signal and above the shunt signal. In a multiple aspect color light signaling system, MACLS, the driver of a train is warned of the approaching stop signal by a permissive signal called the distance signal, is located at an adequate distance in rear of the stop signal, the aspect of which it pre-warns. An adequate distance of one kilometer has been normally adopted by Indian Railways. This distance together with the distance at which the warning board is located in rear of the distance signal is adequate for a driver to stop his train at the stop signal in case it is at on. The braking distance, adequate distance, is reckoned from the warning board and not from the distance signal in the existing system of multiple aspect color light signaling. This arrangement is considered satisfactory up to certain speeds and haulage capacity of trains. With increase in speed and haulage capacity of passenger and goods trains, the above mentioned distance is not sufficient, which brings out the braking distances required for some of the loads and speeds. General Rules GR 3.076 stipulates that whenever necessary, more than one distance signal may be provided. In such a case, the outermost signal to be located at an adequate distance from the first stop signal shall be called the distant and the other called the inner distant signal. From the above, it can be seen that even though in the present system of MACLS, the distance signal can be placed at adequate distance in the rear of home signal, placing it more than one kilometer where higher adequate distances are required is not recommended by GR. In such cases, the GR recommends placing of second distance signal. This may be to enable the driver not to forget the aspect of the signal he has picked up in case of too much distance between subsequent signals. Driver can know the information of the signals ahead well in advance, two kilometer in advance. Confidence in the driver is increased since he is having sufficient braking distance for high speeds. Sectional average speed is improved. Goods warning board is not required. Features. Normal aspect of distance signal is double yellow. Normal aspect of inner distance signal is yellow. Distance signal is painted with yellow and black paint stripes alternatively with 300 mm width. 
Serial number, indication to driver, distance signal, inner distance signal, home signal, main line starter, advanced starter. May stop at home, double yellow, yellow, red. May stop at main line starter, green, double yellow, yellow, red. To run through, green, 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 green. To stop at loop starter or pass via loop, double yellow, double yellow, yellow with root indicator. Cleanliness of the lenses and housing shall be checked by the technician fortnightly. Lamp replacement as per extent instructions shall be checked by the technician fortnightly. Working of lamps at 90% rated voltage shall be checked by the technician fortnightly. Testing of lamps prior to the replacement shall be checked by the technician fortnightly. Proper seating of bulbs shall be checked by the technician fortnightly. Focusing of signal shall be checked by the technician monthly. Adjusting nuts shall be checked by the technician monthly. Do's. Please ensure signal post is plumb. Ensure proper focusing of signal before it is put in service. Carry out preheat test the signal lamps before they are provided on the signal. Avoid any bright light in rear of the signal. If unavoidable, provide sheet to obstruct false light to have clear visibility of light. Proper gasketing of signal units, calling on units, A markers, etc. should be done to avoid phantom indications. Replace the lamp during morning period. Check for any blackish or whitish spot on lamp and replace it immediately if found. Signal transformer should be checked for its firm connection and its heating. For stop signals, provide outer lens with molded deflecting prism for close-up view. Clean the lenses and bulbs regularly. Check the gasket especially before monsoon and replace if found defective. Don'ts. Never keep uncommissioned signal unit facing approaching train without a cross sign. Never open the rear cover in face of approaching train for doing adjustments. Never commission green aspect LED in blanking mode.